The cost of renting a car is a function of the number of miles that you drive it in this context. That means that the more you drive it, the more you'd pay. Renting a car at Hertz, misspelled on purpose, costs a rental fee of $30 plus 40 cents per mile. And then we're gonna write the function that represents this, which is actually what they're asking for in number two. So let's do that. Let's do that in blue. Write the cost Y as a function of the number of miles X. So we're gonna do something to X to get Y. We're gonna do something to the number of miles to figure out how much it would cost. And they told us what we needed to know. So I'm gonna pay 30 bucks. Like, I'm just, I'm gonna pay 30 bucks. It's gonna happen. I could like rent the car and not drive anywhere and I pay 30 bucks. But then I also pay 40 cents per mile. So point, uh, point 0.40 times X, I left the decimal off. There we go, let's fix that, okay. I was gonna do it on purpose and then use it as a, use it as an object lesson of making sure you put your decimal in the right place, but yeah, we'll just go for it. And that's it, that's it. So it kind of makes sense, like if I drove one mile, I'd have 30 dollars plus 0.4, so 30 dollars and 40 cents. How much would it cost to rent the car and drive it for 50 miles? Okay, well that works, so Y equals I pay 30 bucks and then I pay 40 cents per mile for 50 miles. And then I'd figure this out. Why am I using a calculator? That would be 30 and then 40% of 50 would be 20. And so that gives me 50. So when I drive 50 miles, I pay $50. All right, now how far did you drive the rental car if you had to pay $74.80? Now things are different. So now they are saying, you know how much you paid, how far did you drive? So now I have to solve for the other variable. That is going to be the point of inverses. We are solving for the other variable. I need to solve this for x. Now, the way I used to structure this lesson was that I would have a problem that asked how how far did I drive if I had to pay this much? And then the next problem said, how far did I drive if I had to pay this much? And then how far did I drive? And it was like, oh my goodness, make it stop. And it was to prove a point that you can solve for X over and over and over, or you could just solve for X to start with. So didn't want to go through all that over and over again. But we are going to do it this time and then just talk about it right here on number five. So let's subtract 30 from both sides. Cancel, cancel. And that's going to give me... 4480 equals 0 0.40x, and then we will switch colors again for fun. 0 0.40, 0 0.40, we cancel those. And we will divide 4480 by 40 cents, and that's going to give me 1, 1, 2, Am I right? I feel like my decimal's in the wrong place. One, one, two, zero. Yeah, 1120. I'm gonna double check because I'm just having a massive brain fart right now. No, 112, that was right, that's right. Okay, all right, sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, that makes sense because those zero, zeros will go away. All right, 112 miles, all right. Pardon my little brain fart that happened there. I was trying to do a little bit in my head and that's a good idea, but just had to double check. So how far did you drive the rental car if you had to pay 74.80? Well, I drove 112 miles. Okay, and that didn't make sense, like uh, 1,120 miles would be way too much. But <clears throat> here again is the deal. We want to solve this for X. So it says write the number of miles driven as a function of the cost of renting the car. So let's go here instead. And now they're saying if you had to solve for X over and over and over, you'd get sick of it, right? Because you'd subtract 30 divided by 0.4, subtract 30 divided by 0.4, subtract 30 divided by 0.4, subtract 30. Like for crying out loud, can we just do it from here? Subtract 30 divide by 0.4. I'll put the zero there. So anytime I hand you a dollar amount, and say, how far did you drive the car? You could plug it in right here and you don't have to go through this process over and over. That is the point of inverses. This is not the way inverses are necessarily represented, but this is the point that we're solving for the other variable. It's a literal equation.